Yeah, um, good afternoon. I'm really glad to see you all here and, and um, welcome to our panel discussion uh, on, like Birgit also said, contributing to WordPress without knowing how to code. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Birgit Olsen, and unfortunately, the original host, uh, Ahmed Kabircha, and, and his a panelist, Manuel, um, who were original part of this panel, uh, couldn't attend due to the visa situation. And uh, on very short notice, I'm really glad that Junko and Alicia uh, agreed on uh, participating on this panel and sharing their stories. And um, I'm also very thankful for the WordCamp Europe content team uh, who were very responsive um, to deal with the uh, situation on short notice and, um, yeah, make the best of it. So, um, now let me introduce again <laughs> Alicia, um, Junko, and Patricia. Uh, I invite you, could you please introduce yourself for a short? Sure, should I start? Um, hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, so I'm Ali Churru. I'm Italian. Um, I work as a content designer and software localization specialist, especially for many themes and uh, WordPress themes and plugins, with a focus on inclusive and accessible writing. And I started contributing to WordPress in 2016. Hello, my name is Patricia. I come from the French-speaking part of Switzerland in Geneva. Um, I contribute to the community team um, by organizing events in my country, WordPress Meetup now since 10 years, for 10 years, and uh, co-organizer in WordCamps in Switzerland. Hi, hello, uh, my name is Junko Nukanga. Yeah, I live on a small island in Japan uh, called Ogijima with a population of 100 15 people, yeah. Um, I'm freelance web designer, uh, and uh, with WordPress, I'm uh, lead organizer of WordCamp Kansai and WordCamp Kobe, and I'm a deputy in the WordPress community and one of the, this year's team leaders. I also do translation and report bugs when I notice them. I'm not very good at English, so um, today I'm supported by my Japanese friend, Shusei. <laughs> uh, I try to speak myself as much as possible, but sometimes I may mix Japanese. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> Again, welcome to our panel, and thank you for your assistance. So, okay, let's start with some personal experiences and our and your journey. Um, could each of you share how you contribute to WordPress project and what initially inspired you to get involved? And why community? Um, what do you personally get from contributing to WordPress uh, in a project? Patricia, would you like to start? Then we move over to Alicia and then to Junko. Is this okay? Yeah. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself as well first? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I call myself a WordPress veteran uh, because I've used WordPress since uh, to, uh, the first release 20 years ago, and I'm contributing to WordPress over 13 years, and I started with translating WordPress in German, and then I also started uh, managing the uh, local uh, translation platform on dewordpress.org, thanks to Robert Windisch, who pushed me to do so. <laughs> and uh, that's when I started actively contributing to WordPress, but I also visited WordCamps. And now I'm focusing more on creating more awareness for diversity, equality, and inclusion in, our, in the WordPress community so that everyone feels welcome and belonging to the WordPress community. 
Can, can you just repeat the, quest, the first question? Yes, uh, I was, why community? And what do you personally get from computing to WordPress community? Okay, so the first thing is I made friends from all around the world and um, by organizing local meetups, I made long lasting friendship in my uh, lo local community. So that was the main, that is the main uh, good thing that is uh, to contribute to community and organizing events. And uh, I get to travel to WordCamp Europe and nearby country WordCamps. Uh, for example, from Switzerland, I go to uh, WordCamp in France and Italy, and I try to volunteer all the time because it's uh, such an amazing experience. Um, what I get is because every time, every month when we do local meetups, I learn something new all the time, you know. And over the years, also, I learned to, how to organize events find sponsors, <laughs> uh, raise funds, um, and it's good also to, to have so much, a diverse uh, range of uh, um, speakers who talk about so many topics, so I learned a lot to meeting all those people. Thank you. So in my case, I, mean, I started contributing in 2016, and that those times I recently joined a WordPress company, WP Rocket, so I was already working in translations. And I met Laura Sacco, which is, who is one of the pillars of the Italian polyglots community. And she onboarded it immediately because she said, you can speak languages, you can speak Italian, I also speak Spanish and French, so being a polyglot was my thing right away. <laughs> and um, so I found the Italian community first, then the Spanish one, and then I met the European one as well. So I really, f first of all, I'd say that my, the main reason why I'm here is because of, as Patricia was saying, because of people. And I met a lot of friends over the years. So speaking at work camps and also contributing via Slack and remotely with the community is a way to keep in touch with a lot of people scattered around the world. So that's very precious for me. And also professionally, it's been very important to, I'd say that the community has been my first um, training field because I learned about localization, interna internationalization, very specific topics that it would have it would have been difficult maybe to pay uh, maybe an online course or going to your university just to learn those stuff. So the community was very supportive also in that sense. So I own, own it a lot, own a lot also in the professional, uh, in the professional side of things. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Very inspiring. Junko. Hi, uh, I focus on WordPress community and support betting and orientation for people who want to start WordCamp or and, uh, meet up. Yeah. And I also consult with them about how to run the event and, and why community. And I think it is not easy to make money uh, with community. But I believe it has helped me grow as a person. At time, I think uh, WordPress has brought me so far. Uh, I can make friends with so many people I would never know in my daily life. And here there are those I would never have thought of coming abroad, yay! <laughs> 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 or learning English like this if it was not for WordPress. I think that experience itself uh, is a treasure to me. Thank you very much. So, uh, as I understand, um, you choose to contribute to WordPress because of the people within the WordPress community. So, you found someone who had introduced you or you picked up your own profession within and found your field. Um, I would like to hear about your challenges and skills and how you overcome obstacles within um, getting involved into the project. Um, what are the skills uh, that had you when you started contributing, um, when you, what you learned through the process? You told you you learned so much English also to contribute and what 
other obstacles you saw um, while contributing to WordPress? Alice, would you like to start and we sure. move on to Junko and then to you? Um, the main obstacles I found, I think, was just getting used to all the, um, I don't know, the many places where the community moves. There is the Slack, there is the uh, Make WordPress, there are a lot of places of where and channels of communication. So at first, maybe for me, it was a bit difficult to understand where my people were, where the polyglots met, but at the same time, the onboarding process was pretty um, supportive. So I always have people around that told me where to go, where to find answers, uh, where to read documentation. So yeah, it was kind of, I think it's natural when you start doing something new, you feel overwhelmed a little bit by the many information and flow of information you can get. Um, but mm, I mean, the good thing of the WordPress community is that there is a lot of people doing this for so many years and, and they're very supportive. So it's easy to find your way. Um, yeah, and that was the main obstacle I have to say. And the Italian community is very open and welcoming. So I, I've always felt at home. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, uh, I think relationships can be very difficult. Um, most of us are doing WordPress things while having other jobs. Uh, so communication in a limited time frame um, can lead to uh, misunderstandings. Uh, we value dialogue but at the same time, we try to make sure our honest opinions are heard. Mm. For example, when some, someone is struggling... St struggling. <laughs> struggling. <laughs> Thank you. With someone else in the community, I will not be the referee. No, I'm not. Um, but I will be as honest as possible about what I think. Yeah, very uh, important. And if I am wrong, I apologize. I believe that even if the conflict is not resolved immediately. Immediately, immediately, <laughs> immediately. Like not in a timely manner. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no need for apologizing. We are all uh, human beings, <laughs> yes. And yeah. the most of the people who are attending to WordCamp yeah. Europe are not native English-speaking yeah. people. I, yeah, I think and honest, so important. Yes, <laughs> absolutely agree. <laughs> So first, Junko, your English is better than my Japanese. <laughs> so thank you for contributing like this. So about the, str the struggle I faced, first on my personal level, um, you know, I'm used to work alone. I'm a kind of freelancer or rather solopreneur. So um, one of my struggles was to work with a team when we were organizing WordCamp in Switzerland. So I had to learn to, you know, work with others <laughs> and I got better at that, I hope. And on another level, the struggle we faced uh, organizing um, events, especially World Camps, uh, is about the multilingual um, part because uh, the World Camp sites are not yet uh, multilingual and in Switzerland we speak so many languages. <laughs> so thankfully this year we had the help of a great uh, um, uh, teammate, uh, Mark, Mark Owlsmead, who used the great features of the site editor, the full site editor, and blogs to create a free languages WordCamp website. So that was how we overcame this. It's much better now with the site editor. You know? <laughs> and um, yeah, there was, uh, there is also struggles. Um, there is no budget for meetups. Um, monthly meetup, so we have to get creative to find free venues. And yeah, we, we somehow are used to that now. Um, but it's uh, now so because after the pandemic, you know, people get used to stay at home and 
sometimes it's difficult to even have people come into the meetup, so we have to get creative, and that's good because we train our creative mind, you know, <laughs> to find solutions. Yeah, that would be the struggle. I yeah, thank you. Um, what do you think are uh, also obstacles for new contributors to come to contribute to WordPress, especially for people who are afraid or intimidated by uh, having to know code? Because um, as we are seeing in, in the WordPress community, there is some kind of um, celebrity around the core committers. And I feel myself, or felt myself, uh, kind of intimidated at the uh, beginning um, how to contribute to a project like WordPress. It's an open source project, and so many talented people are also um, giving their time and effort and skills to it. But we, I think we, we uh, would like to have more people involved, especially in, in underrepresented make teams for WordPress. Yes, uh, As you mentioned, you started with uh, translation and organizing events. You are organizing events. What obstacles do you feel are there for new contributors to entry the WordPress ecosystem. Would you like to start? Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Uh, speak English, please, okay? すごくたくさんやらないといけないって自分で思っちゃうとすごく大変になるっていうのがハードルだと思う。<laughs> <laughs> She's saying if there's too much things to do and get worried, that might be like an obstacle for the new contributors. You know, like, yeah, like, don't, they don't have to be scared. But like, I have to do this, I have to do that. Like, they can just start small. So that could be one of the obstacles that she, she, she sees. Mm -hmm. So, yes. What do you see as obstacle for new contributors to start? Yes, there is this misconception uh, that I don't know to code, I cannot join, or I'm not a designer, I'm a beginner. And I constantly repeat in meetups and uh, local work camps, uh, you don't have to be, say, there's so many things to do, we need you. Um, yeah, I would say the first uh, thing would be to attend meetups and local work camps and join the Contributor Day, where there is an onboarding process, which is very welcoming. Also have a look at uh, make.wordpress.org and um, look at the description for each team because that you, you might find something that appeals to you, you know. And at the beginning when I started uh, <laughs> organizing meetups, I didn't even know I was contributing to a large scale community. I, I was thinking, oh, it, there is a local meetup about WordPress. So I go there and they ask me, the, the two, uh, I mean, founder of this group were leaving the town, um, and they, they asked two of us to take take it over. I, I didn't re even realize there was like 800 groups around the world and so many work camps I didn't know about. So I was contributing without knowing that I was contributing, you know. But if uh, when when I say now to people, uh, please join, we need. Uh, it would be a dream if every WordPress user gave like. 5% of their time for, to contribute to the project. As we, we talked yesterday about 5 to 5 for the future. So it's, uh, yeah, it's good. We, we have a, a free and priceless solution that is WordPress. So it's good if we give back uh, by any skill that you can contribute with. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Patricia said it all. Uh, <laughs> but I, I just wanted to add up that mm, from my experience, what I notice is uh, meet up, um, maybe contributor days at work, local work camps or even European ones um, are very uh, crowded. There's a lot of people starting from they want to contribute. What I notice is that sometimes it's difficult to make people stay. Uh, so you have a lot of onboarding the first day and then over time uh, it's difficult to keep up via Slack or doing remote contribution. So what Patricia said about finding your local places, your local people, it's very important to keep the motivation of that first contributor day because it's easy to um, 
on be on board in, on the first day, but then when you get back home, uh, you get caught up with your job, your family, and your life, and maybe the contribution is where left a bit on the side. So maybe as a community, we should keep on uh, strongly uh, encouraging people to keep in touch, even remotely, and sharing the way we can do that without, without even being, but let's think about how many people live in little towns or remote places where there's not even a local meetup. So finding community moments uh, online and remotely is, very, is still very important. Um, yeah. If, I can, add some, if I can add something to what Alice said, um, I just heard that a new meetup group has been created in Catalonia uh, to be uh, a ru rural, ru sorry, I rural, know I don't know how to pronounce rural, that, so. rural yeah. yeah, a rural meetup for Catalonia that will go from small towns to small town because oh. there is no meetups and yes. that's, that's a great initiative that could be, should be cooped. Copied. Shared and copied. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know and that. And uh, also for meetup organizers, if you sometimes we don't have an idea who to invite, what to do, what to say at next month's meetup, so we could simply do contribution meetups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you would say um, the easiest entry point into the virtual contributions is uh, going to a meetup, attending to a meetup, or maybe organizing a meetup. But what's about the other? projects and teams within a WordPress community which doesn't involve to have the knowledge about how to code. Um, as we see, we have uh, the documentation team, the training team who are building learnwordpress.org um, who want to help to, to build more confidence. We have also the w WP diversity team mm -hmm. who is very, very um, passionate about to um, motivate and encourage uh, new contributors to speak, to mm -hmm. be on a stage like this, yes? Um, but also the testing for WordPress. Um, everything which, uh, every project which uh, involves development needs also other parts. Um, I guess no developer is really fond of it, of the idea to write the documentation, or am I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what do you see uh, are the most needed um, parts of the WordPress community contribution? ecosystem to jump in when you are not a dev developer. I struggle with this word. Sorry, I'm not an active English speaking person. So what do you think? Um, it's the most vulnerable part of a community uh, where we need more active contributors. Do you like? Maybe? Okay, we are going around. So. But for example, translations is one of the, the polyglots group is one of the groups that really is accessible to almost anyone knowing their own language. That's what Laura Sacco told me when, when I started. I mean, you know Italian, you know Italian well. I mean, of course, you have to speak the language well, but there's a lot to do um, even in the polyglots team without knowing how to code. We translate plugins, themes, uh, we translate the core, but we also do a lot of documentation and have translating documentation uh, from other teams. So there's really a lot to do of what the WordPress community as a whole produces. There's a lot to translate. And uh, if you know your language well enough, there's always need for a good hand to um, to work on those documents and all the many things that the old community produces and, and would like to translate. I, I started also uh, to translate uh, some years ago, but it's not where I was the best, so <laughs> you know, it, it depends what you like and you look at the list of as I said before, on make.wordpress.org, and you see the list of all the teams, and what, whatever uh, sounds good, nice to you to participate, you just uh, join the Slack and begin to talk with people and attend the office hours on Slack and read the chat. Um, maybe you will find something very exciting, you will make friends, as I love <laughs> And yeah, um, I think, yeah, it's up to you what you are good at, what you like, you know. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, uh, in Japan, and original Slack 
uh, region, Jap Japanese slug, WordPress slug, and, and one week, uh, one time, uh, gathering slug, uh, translation time mm -hmm. uh, we have. <laughs> and so, um, uh, gathering and mentoring, uh, so um, kind. Um, yeah. So you're um, doing some kind of WP translation days in Japanese uh, where you onboard uh, new contributors and also work on the project itself, yeah? Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so you do it weekly? Weekly? Yes, not monthly or not yearly. We do it every Friday from 10 p.m. And we, in Japan, we welcome everybody to come in and translate plugins or themes or even the documents. That's just amazing. Yeah. I'm totally jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and whenever people come in, we don't do it in Zoom or in in-person style. We, do, we only do it in Slack. Mm -hmm. So everybody can join from, let's say, home or their work or maybe somewhere else. And if there are newcomers uh, coming in, we always welcome them and we ask them what they want to do. And we try to guide them to how they can do it like sustainably. Mm -hmm. I think Alice, I think you were saying mm -hmm. that sustainability yeah. for you know, onboarding new contributors is key process. So that's what we've been, that's what we've been doing in Japan. And Juko has been part of that also. So I think she said, translations keep on going would yeah. be a good thing to do awesome yep thank you um just one short advice for new contributors um what would you tell when someone approaches you i would like to contribute to wordpress how can i get involved how can i do it what would you what would be your takeaway tip for them would you like to start um, Yes, it's basically what I said before about looking what they like to do. But um, I would emphasize on the fact that it's a very inclusive community that we try to, to um, like help all diverse diversity, diverse people to, to join. And yeah, make friends and eat good food at Watkins. <laughs> <laughs> a food is always a good yeah. topic. <laughs> um, yeah, we say go all in. Don't yes. worry. And for everyone who is also listening, not only contribute, sorry, um, uh, when you contribute to WordPress, it's not only about bringing in your own time and knowledge. Money is always welcomed. Mm -hmm. So there, we have some initiatives in the WordPress community, not only the Five for the Future program, uh, where companies can pledge um, time or their employees can pledge time to contribute to WordPress, but also we have the, w, uh, the WP Collective. Um, I hope I recall it right. Uh, I will tweet about it here, <laughs> where you as a company or a freelancer can donate your money uh, so that contributors can get funded to pursue their and, and continue their work in contributions, especially if you are on a level with a high responsibility and or uh, being a bottleneck because uh, a big project like WordPress uh, is um, sometimes really hard to stay consistent if you are um, working on it on your spare time and you don't have the financial backgrounds to uh, give in more time. So um, that's why I think it's important that we as a community also uh, make room and say, this are, these are contributors who are very involved and passionate about contributing to WordPress. We need to support them uh, with room or even money to help them to stay on track. So, yeah, that's, what do you think about this? Yes, this is very important as well. Um, my tip will be like, find your people as uh, Patricia was saying, find your, what you like, but also the peop people you like to spend time with. So that's a very important part of the contributing experience. And, and ask a lot of questions because there will be a lot, and, but we have a lot of documentation and information to provide. So 
um, yeah, ask questions and find, find your people to, I mean, we try to be a, a very inclusive and accessible community, so I feel safe in giving this tip. You will find somebody you like. <laughs> Thank you. I guess there's also the mentorship program rolling in into. So yes. uh, where uh, new contributors of WordPress uh, can get a personal mentor uh, yes. to guide them. And Hari Shankar is currently hard working on it. Um, so please reach out on makewordpress.org. Reach out on Twitter to us. Uh, if you have any questions, I would like to invite you. And I'm really glad that you all attended to our panel. And I would like to open the floor for questions from our beloved audience, please. Well, thank you so much. A big hand before, yeah, for all the panelists. And when you get ready for your questions, uh, line up, up behind the microphones. And then uh, we need the microphones because the live audience uh, will hear it. Um, and we have the first question over there. One, two, three. Okay, now we are here. <laughs> Hello. My name is Toby. I'm one of the global mentors for the Polyglots team. So a couple of people in this room may have seen me before. Um, wanted to ask, do, does the community team have any uh, obvious place where you would collect good ideas about how to do things in a different way or what could be improved because I have a feeling that there are so many different things happening there are so many people involved that uh, I a little bit lose track on okay if I just have some idea is there any kind of <laughs> a virtual uh, box where I could just drop this idea so it doesn't get lost um, do you mind mm. First on Slack, on the Make WordPress Slack, you find the channel to, uh, corresponding to the team you want to suggest things to. And then uh, there would be a post uh, posted on make.wordpress.org with uh, anyone publicly can comment and bring new ideas, I think. Yeah. In, every, in every channel there, there is office hours as well, so at that time there is a lot of people to reply to you. So. Yeah, thank you. thank you for your question. Thank and you thank you also for your dedicated work as uh, polyglots. And uh, we worked together for a long time uh, on a polyglots global polyglots mentor team. So thank you also for your contributions to Any new questions, please. Hi, uh, my name is Olga, possibly some also saw me before. Anyway, I'm wondering if your, what is your next big WordPress desire? What you wish, like big wish you can like accomplish with help of all this audience who is uh, looking for us right now. So, what you want? Would you like? And, and Mm, I hope Run World Camp Asia in Japan. <laughs> Do you have any ideas? What's your best, biggest wish for WordPress in the community? I would like to, I mean, we keep on talking about diversity and inclusion and accessibility, which is the three topics that I care a lot about, but a lot of people in the community care about this. And we had some interesting panels yesterday and talks about this, and we are talking about that. It's a mm -hmm. hot topic. I mean, it's been a hot topic for years. Yeah. And so I hope that this conversation keep going and we find more places and times to, to speak about it, like face to face or even remotely, but like taking really good yeah. care of, of this. Uh, I would love for for WordCamp Europe to uh, be more European. <laughs> it means, um, for example, the, the last year in Porto at the Thursday event, there were Portuguese dancers, and that 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 bring a lot of the local feel. 
instead of only English international field, maybe in the future we can have like translation tool, automated tools, and have more, uh, yeah, something more European than, rather than only like an international cosmopolite uh, field, I think. And, I didn't hear. Yeah. yeah, multilingual. Yes, multi, mul yeah, multilingual mm, translation. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that would be awesome. Would be great. Yeah, um, my biggest wish is also to have some kind of um, entity within a WordPress community to ensure the uh, diversity, equality, and inclusion, uh, not only on WordCamps and Meetup, but also within the contributing groups. So that there is a dedicated team uh, who have the knowledge and work um, intensively uh, to make sure that everyone, despite of color or gender or sexual orientation uh, or skill set, feels welcome and finds a place within the WordPress community. Thank you, Olga. Thank you. Thank you. Great Thank question, Olga. We have time for one more question. Harry? Yeah. Fast. <laughs> Harry. Hello. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Harry Shankar. I am a community deputy. And uh, as Birgit mentioned, I am trying to build a mentorship program for WordPress. So my question is to all of you. Um, Alice, you mentioned about the contributor journey, about like how somebody starts contributing at a contributor day, then they are not able to go forward. Like life comes into it. Uh, I found it very interesting and that's the problem that I'm trying to solve. I'm trying to, you know, get, first of all, point one, get more people to come into WordPress and point two, get them to stay. So my question to all of you is, I mean, you all, you're all basically non-code non contributors. I am a non-code contributor. So my question to all of you is, I would like to hear your thoughts on how to solve that problem. How can we get somebody who comes into the project to stay? Based on your experience, like what, based on the pain points that you've faced, what are the ideas that we can do to sort of like fix that problem? Thank you. This is to all of you. Um, I would like, first of all, thank you for your question. It's really a pain point to uh, keep contributing uh, or contributors on track and, and keep them motivated to contribute. Uh, from my experience, uh, we started in Germany uh, the marketing team twice. And it dried out because people disappeared because they couldn't stay longer on the project. And I think um, we need more uh, involvement. And as you mentioned, the mentorship program, uh, I think um, it's important that we stay in touch and communicate on a regular basis and ask for their needs also. What obstacles do they face during their journey? Uh, First of all, we learn as mentors and, and, and uh, um, experienced uh, contributors, but also to maybe solve issues we didn't see as an experienced mm -hmm. and a seasoned contributor. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I have the same experience in the Italian Polyglot team. I think we were one of the first teams to organize a mentorship program inside the translation um, process. So every experienced translator had like uh, one of you uh, new contributors to to follow during their journey in the first at the beginning of their translation journey and this worked very well because you have instantly you have a reference inside a community somebody to speak and ask questions to and that's very important for people knowing where to where to find that person that can solve the questions not maybe not in the common channel which is we can be intimidating sometimes, mm. no? Posing the question in the whole group. So having like a direct channel of communication yeah. with your mentor, it, it's very important also for operational tasks like yeah. translations. Do we have any? I think you said it all. <laughs> uh, yeah, this and uh, what you mentioned before to be sponsored because for independent workers, it's a bit more difficult to, you know, to balance with your client work. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have additional ideas? Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, I agree with you. And I believe size of contribution does not matter. Mm. Everyone can contribute. 
and let's encourage each other and the nice to each other. Mm. These are the two. These are speakers. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, folks, I, I don't know if they have this time. I wanted to ask one more follow-up question, yeah. but I want to be mindful of time. Is it okay, Birgit? Can I ask one more question? Or well, quick. <laughs> very quick. Okay. Not to so, everybody. Very short, very quick question. So, for all of you. No. Um, one. One answer. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Um, so, it's, it's related to this. Many of you mentioned uh, that life comes in the way that is a pain point which stopped you from contributing. I mean, generally. Uh, other than that, is there anything in the project at this time that makes the process of contributing slow or prevents people from contributing continuously? I think that's overwhelming of information. We need more uh, guidance on the onboarding process on a WordPress site. So make it more visual because uh, collecting information from every make team, I feel overwhelmed and I'm a seasoned contributor to WordPress um, and I can't imagine how it feels for a newcomer. Uh, so I think uh, like you also did for your proposal for the mentorship program to visualize the path, the, the contributor journey, have some visual guiding um, how they can start and where can they jump into the project would be really awesome. And designers, you don't need to have to code or a project manager, you don't need to code to contribute to those user journeys and contributor journeys to WordPress. Okay. 